Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening to learn about the US 69 location study. As everyone is getting settled, I just want to take a minute to let everyone know that you are automatically muted and your audio and video are not being captured. The only way you will be able to communicate with the panel this evening is by using the chat box, which I will eventually open. To begin, we're going to play a brief video, and when that video is nearly done, I will open up the podium so you can type your questions into the chat box. I will then read those out loud and the study team will answer them. Please be courteous and polite with your questions. And again, thanks for joining us this evening and I will now begin the video. Welcome to the Iowa Department of Transportation's online meeting for the US 69 location study. We're presenting this information in an electronic format to reach out to the community during COVID-19. At the end of this presentation, we'll open up a live question and answer session where you will be able to type your questions and our study team will answer your questions. The purpose of this online meeting is to provide an overview of the project, review the conditions of this portion of US 69, review the proposed schematic alternatives, and gather public input before the project moves into the next phase of study. At the beginning of 2019, Iowa DOT began a location study along US 69. The approximately 10-mile corridor begins at County Line Road and extends north to Interstates 80 and 35. This study will evaluate existing and future multimodal operations, safety and reliability along the US-69 corridor, and will identify and conceptually develop potential improvements to balance needs and improve safety of motorists, pedestrians, bicyclists, and transit users. US-69 features a wide array of multimodal traffic generators and land uses, including residential, commercial, institutional, and industrial. US-69 also includes roadway sections that transition among four-lane undivided, four-lane to six-lane divided, and one-way pairs. This map shows the annual average daily traffic in 2016. As you can see, the annual average daily traffic varies throughout this 10-mile corridor. This map shows an analysis of traffic crashes between 2014 and 2018, revealing which intersections on the US-69 corridor have poor safety performance. This analysis is based on both the frequency and severity of crashes. Several intersections along US-69 have been identified in Iowa DOT's top 200 intersection safety improvement candidate locations, including Euclid Avenue, University Avenue, Des Moines Street on 15th Street, Grand Avenue on both 14th and 15th Streets, Mari Street, Hartford Avenue, Park Avenue, Indianola Avenue, Army Post Road, and Bloomfield Road. In developing the proposed alternatives, which will be presented after this section, we considered a variety of criteria, including safety, traffic volumes, environmental impacts, reliability, access and mobility, and connectivity. The evaluation criteria, along with our analysis of existing and future conditions, helped us develop a variety of proposed alternatives for these segments of US-69 for your review and feedback. Please note that all proposed alternatives are preliminary and not final. More study is necessary prior to moving forward with any of the alternatives. A variety of intersection treatment alternatives have been developed for this 10-mile segment of US-69. We will review the highlights of these alternatives by improvement type, starting from the north to the south. Left and right turn lanes. Dedicated left and right turn lanes have been proposed to be added at certain locations along the corridor, where they will improve safety, traffic flow, and operations of the intersection, including Madison Avenue, both northbound and southbound left turn lanes, Mari Street, including eastbound and westbound right turn lanes, Hartford Avenue, including northbound, southbound, and eastbound right turn lanes, Army Post Road, including westbound and northbound right turn lanes, and County Line Road, including northbound and eastbound right turn lanes, dual westbound left turn lanes, and northbound left turn lanes. Positive left turn offsets. Positive left turn offsets, which is when the left turn lanes are shifted to the left to enhance sight distance for opposing left turn drivers, have been proposed for locations in need of improvement distance and safety, including Euclid Avenue and Army Post Road. Displaced left turn intersections. A displaced left turn intersection is when traffic that would normally turn left at the main intersection would first cross the opposing through lanes at a signal controlled intersection upstream of the main intersection. 
Left-turning vehicles would then travel on a new street parallel to the opposing lanes and turn left simultaneously with the through traffic at the main intersection. Displaced left turns have been proposed at the following intersections, Park Avenue and Army Post Road. Restricted left turn movements. Some intersections on US 69 have been recommended to have restricted left turn movements in order to improve safety, traffic flow, and operations of an intersection. Locations include Park Avenue, including northbound and southbound, Indianola Avenue, including northwestbound and southeastbound, and Indianola and Park Avenue, including westbound. Protected only left turn phasing. To improve the safety of left turn movements at some intersections, Iowa DOT is using protected only left turn phasing, which means that left turns would only be on a green left arrow signal indication. Locations include Euclid Avenue, Hartford Avenue, and Watchers Avenue. Prohibited right turn on red and left turn on red movements. Prohibiting right turn on red or left turn on red movements can improve safety of all users of the right of way. Locations that would prohibit these movements include I-235 ramps and 14th and 15th Streets, 14th Street and Grand Avenue, 15th Street and Walker Street, 15th Street and Grand Avenue, and 15th Street and Walnut Street. Roundabouts improve safety at intersections while slowing down traffic and likely reducing delays. Therefore, the study team evaluated which intersections on US 69 would be good candidates for a roundabout intersection. Based on these preliminary evaluations, the following intersections have been identified candidates for a future roundabout. Hole Avenue, Morton Avenue, Guthrie Avenue, Washington Avenue, and Cleveland Avenue. Please note that these schematics are preliminary. Additional study would be needed prior to moving forward with design or construction. Currently, US 69 doesn't directly intersect with MLK Parkway, both of which are considered major arterial roadways. The study team is evaluating the following alternatives to provide improved connectivity between MLK Parkway and US 69. Option A would be an exclusive eastbound and westbound right turn lanes on Mari Street. Option B would be a quadrant intersection. Option C includes an offset T intersection. And option D would be a low speed interchange. Please note that these schematics are preliminary. Additional study would be needed prior to moving forward with design or construction. The major intersection of US 69 and Army Post Road have a history of crashes and is listed on Iowa DOT's top 200 intersection safety improvement candidate locations. Therefore, the study team is considering multiple alternatives. Option A would include traditional intersection improvements, including the addition of dedicated right turn lanes, offset left turn lanes, and a second eastbound through lane. Option B would include construction of a displaced left turn intersection. At this intersection, eastbound Army Post Road traffic that would normally turn left at the main intersection would first cross the opposing through lanes at a signal controlled intersection upstream main intersection. Left turning vehicles would then travel on a new street parallel to the opposing lanes and turn left simultaneously with the through traffic at the main intersection. Option C includes construction of a median U-turn intersection where left turns and crossings are made using indirect downstream U-turn movements. A variety of corridor alternatives have been developed for this 10-mile segment of US 69. Medians. Along the northern portion of the US 69 corridor, the study team is proposing the addition of three-foot wide medians with breaks at minor intersections between Euclid Avenue and University Avenue. The use of medians in these areas would help control access along the corridor and reduce the number of turning movements that can cause crashes. The area that is being considered for a three-foot wide median is shown on the map. Three-quarter access and right in, right out. To provide access control along US 69, up to 38 intersections would be converted from full access to three-quarter access or right in, right out intersections. 
Three-quarter access allows for right-in, right-out, and left-in access, but restricts left-out and through access on side streets. Three-quarter access intersections decrease the potential for vehicle crossing crashes. Right-in, right-out access allows for right-in and right-out access, but restricts left-in, left-out, and through access on side streets. Intersections that are considered candidates for three-quarter or right-in, right-out access are shown on the map. The following are key intersections for the safety improvement. Fremont Street, Des Moines Street, Railroad Avenue, Virginia Avenue, and Thornton Avenue. Converting outside lanes to right turn only lanes. At all three lane sections between Watrous Avenue and Army Post Road, outside lanes that are currently through lanes would be converted to right turn only lanes. City of Des Moines project considerations. A select number of downtown streets have been identified through other studies as potential candidates for bicycle treatments and lane reductions, including University Avenue, Grand Avenue, and Avenue. Bicycle and Pedestrian Alternatives Currently, US-69 has limited bicycle and pedestrian facilities along the corridor. The US-69 Location Study is evaluating a variety of bicycle and pedestrian improvements, including shared-use paths, bike boulevards, and bike lanes, all of which would improve north-south connectivity. US-69 from Broadway Avenue to University Avenue would include a combination of shared-use paths along the corridor in conjunction with bike boulevards on parallel side streets to the US-69 corridor. On US-69 from University Avenue to Court Avenue, the study team is considering adding a shared-use path along both 14th and 15th streets, or just 15th Street. This improvement will connect to existing bicycle and pedestrian facilities from 14th Street to just north of Hartford Avenue using Court Avenue, 6th Street, and the Des Moines River Trail. From just north of Hartford Avenue to County Line Road, the study team is considering a shared-use path that would connect to existing bike lane facilities on Indianola Avenue at the US-69 and Indianola Avenue intersection, and a future shared-use path on Indianola Avenue at County Line Road. We are currently in the conceptual alternatives phase. Once a draft study report has been developed, we will present our recommendations and ask for additional public feedback prior to developing the final study report. Thank you for reviewing information for the US-69 location study. Now we are going to open up to our live question and answer session. To submit a question or comment to the project team, click the Join the Podium button. Your virtual podium comment will be entered into the official project record may be read aloud or displayed on screen, and will be responded to either live or post-event by the project team. All right, we're now going to have our live question and answer session. You should see a join the podium button, and after clicking that, you'll be able to submit your question or comment. Once we begin getting comments, I'll read them aloud for everyone to hear, and the panel will answer. All right, we have our first question from Kathy Kay. Is there a street that is less busy than the highway for bike traffic to be on? Joe, you may need to unmute. Yep, sorry about that. Can everyone hear me now? Yes. Great. Yeah, so we, we did study um, what's the concept is called a bike boulevard. 
and it is a less busy uh, adjacent parallel street to US 69. And Kristen, if you could go over to the map that shows the uh, bike connectivity options. I can point out the locations where we looked at the bike boulevard. So all areas or segments that are kind of that brown rust color are the areas that would be using a bike boulevard or an adjacent parallel street that's less busy. Typically um, on the north end of our study area, that would be York Street. So it is an adjacent uh, two lane uh, local street that has a lot less volume on it. And therefore we'd uh, have bikes uh, run along that street. Um, in between those areas, we would have shared use path that would be in the US 69 right of way. So that would be off of the roadway proper for the shared use path. That's correct. Yep, it would be um, off of the back of curb uh, within the right of way, but off the street. Okay. Yep. All right. Our next question is from Mel P. Thank you for proposing closing the uncontrolled left turn openings on Highway 69 Southeast 14th, just south of Murray at Railroad Avenue. And that's just a comment. Okay. Um, then we have one from Daniel C. What is a bike boulevard? Yeah, this is Joe Spradling again. Uh, Kristen, if you could go to the uh, bike boulevard typical section on the story map. So the concept of a bike boulevard, and once we get this pulled up here, it'll be a little easier to explain. Uh, but the bike boulevard, again, is, is a, um, a bike facility on a less busy street um, than US 69. And so essentially through the use of signing and striping, um, it's, a, it's a street that bikes can feel comfortable uh, riding their bike on within the street or in traffic. Uh, so you can kind of see that on the graphic here uh, that we do have some Shero lanes um, or Shero striping on the pavement in both directions to show uh, all users and, and in particular vehicles that uh, bikes are allowed on the street and um, to slow down and uh, create a safe environment for all bikes and, and users. And then also uh, signage that would say to share the road with, with the, the bikes. Um, the other thing that can happen too are, are some uh, speed humps and other things to calm traffic on these boulevards. But um, on, on these uh, lower volume streets, it's much more uh, safe and comfortable to ride your bike on an adjacent roadway. And again, if you go, uh, Kristen, if you go back to the map, you'll be able to see that the bike boulevard, again, in that rust color is about a street to the west of US 69 and parallels US 69 for a good portion of the study area. So very, very simple concept, but, but gets a lot of that bike traffic off of the US 69 busy corridor and onto a parallel street for a safer experience. All right, the next comment is from Aaron and Amanda P. Are there other areas in Des Moines where roundabouts have been retrofitted into the street designs? And how have those been received? This is Joe Spradling. Again, I, to my knowledge, I don't believe there's been a roundabout retrofitted into a street in the city limits of Des Moines. Uh, Certainly I'm, not on the state system. Right. 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 I'm not, aware Can, of, not aware of anything to me. Yeah. City street system. There might be one or two, but I don't know. Yeah. There might have been some proposed at some of the some city street intersections, but I'm not sure if they were followed through on. Okay. So none that we're aware of on a state or U.S. highway within okay. the city of Des Moines. Right. <clears throat> okay. The next question is from Austin B. It appears this project is intended to increase level of service at risk for non-auto road users. Is safety or is road capacity being prioritized and has induced demand been accounted for? 
Can you go on? This is the primary focus of the study is, is uh, making safety improvements along Highway 69. It's not improving the level of service. So if there are benefits to level of service, that's uh, just another benefit. But the primary focus of the study is to improve intersections or the whole corridor or the safety of the, the whole 10 mile stretch of US Highway 69. And I, I think one one example of that is up on the more northern side of the um, the study area. Um, you know, looking at the potential for roundabouts um, through you know a residential neighborhood. Um, you know that that does provide um, traffic calming, so it does slow down traffic and make it safer for all users uh, through the area. Um, and so that that is something that uh, yes, you might be able to reduce delay at the intersection, but overall through that corridor of five roundabouts, um, it would, would calm traffic or slow traffic down. So that would be an overall safety improvement. So just one example of, of looking at improving safety. Uh, another location is where we restrict the left and the rights on red. Mm -hmm. uh, that really improves pedestrian safety. Mm -hmm. uh, and and all at the same time, it's going to decrease capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think the same could be said for the right in, right outs, and the three quarter access as well. Uh, you're eliminating some of those those left turns off, you know, off onto the to the US 69 corridor. So again, proving some of that safety for some of the pedestrians and other users. All right, our next question is from Alec D. Does the current plan offer no bike pedestrian option for the section north of the Des Moines River? So, Kristen, if you could go to the map again. And if you scroll to the south. Right. Currently, what we're looking at is utilizing um, some of the existing bike network uh, that the city of Des Moines has already put in place. Uh, so at the very north end, we'd be looking at utilizing bike lanes that are on uh, East Court Avenue, East 6th Avenue or Street, and then also the uh, Des Moines River Trail um, through that area. Uh, the challenge uh, that we have uh, crossing the river there is uh, it's a more narrow bridge with narrow sidewalks. And so there, we are really constrained on trying to provide some sort of bike facility within the right of way through that area. So at this time, we're, we're looking at utilizing a lot of the existing bike network to meet that need and really provide that connectivity through this through this area. Tony, anything to, to add to that? Yeah, I mean, right now, <clears throat> those bridges are scheduled. The bridges over the Des Moines River are in the program to get replaced. So there'd be an opportunity to provide better pedestrian access along 69. Do we have a typical section, Joe, that shows improvements along 69 behind the curb? Um, I think we do have one. I, I don't think in this stretch, but up north we do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We also have long bridges over the railroad mm -hmm. uh, on the north edge of this uh, corridor, this piece of the corridor that would have the same thing. issue. That's right. If, uh, Kristen, if you could zoom in just a little bit into this area. Uh, John's referring to the viaduct that's existing um, over uh, MLK Parkway and the, I believe that's Union Pacific Railroad in that area, yes, right there. So uh, again, we have a uh, cross section there on those bridges, yeah. Yep, limited cross section on the, on the bridge. <clears throat> but we are showing some south of the one river, we're showing some possible pedestrian bike accommodation along 69 behind the curb again. That's right. That would be a shared use path right. um, on one side of the, the street or the other um, within the right of way. Yeah, right now, the sidewalks maybe are four or five feet and they would have to be widened out and replaced to a 10 foot yep. plus or minus width. Yep. I think we're looking at eight to 10 foot wide on the, on the shared use path segments. Okay. Okay, our next question is from Thomas G.S. At Emma Avenue, how will children in apartments get to school buses across Highway 69? And how will truck travel of Car Wash and AG Belt be able to turn left at the Emma intersection? So yeah, Kristen, if you could scroll to Emma, I believe is, is the location. 
So yeah, just south of the triangle. So right now, uh, what we're considering at this location is uh, what would be called the three-quarter access. I think there was a schematic earlier uh, that showed that. So that would actually uh, limit left turns onto US 69. Um, currently, that's that's what that's what we have uh, considered at this location. Um, we did uh, look at uh, traffic signal warrants at this location, and um, they they do not meet any of the the, the traffic signal warrants at this time. Um, at this location, that's right. Yep, that's uh, from the manual on uniform traffic control devices. There are nine warrants that need to be met, um, and this location doesn't meet any of those currently. It's not even all the warrants. I mean, I don't think any of the warrants. That's are that's at correct. This intersection. You don't need any of nine, but if you need some of them, then they can be considered for a traffic signal. That's right, and they, they currently don't meet any any of the the signal warrants at this location. But and where are adjacent signals? Are they fairly close? To yeah, one? there is a signal. Um, I think just to the south. Um, there. Yeah, if you could scroll a little bit to the south, Kristen. McKinley. I think that's McKinley Avenue. It's definitely. Signalized. Uh, there's a signalized intersection and would provide a crosswalk, signalized crosswalk at that location. All right, the next one is a statement from Mel P. Installing a three foot median on portions of Highway 69 north of University Avenue may address safety for turning, but it will have a huge economic disincentive to the many small businesses and residents along this area, lowering property values. Southeast 14th has suffered from this when, median, when the median was installed. Perhaps the price to pay for greater through traffic safety. The comment. Then we have Austin B. What design options are being used to ensure the roundabouts are being taken at a safe speed for pedestrian crossings? For example, 15 miles per hour. Why is a multi-lane roundabout being considered? Yep, this is Joe Spradling again on the design team. Um, so the roundabouts um, are being considered, and I'm not sure the video pointed this out, but they're actually being considered in conjunction with the raised median through this area, the three foot wide raised median. And what that can provide is a U-turn um, um, option for folks that, that can't turn left into their driveway or entrance. And so they can go up and take a, take a U-turn to gain access to their property. Um, the the uh, the travel speed on the roundabout, uh, I believe, with the design criteria that we're using, is uh, 15 miles an hour on the roundabout itself. Um, so the uh, the design is is such that it slows traffic down as they uh, approach the the roundabout, and then when they're on the roundabout lane itself, uh, they would have to proceed at a slower speed to to make that maneuver. Uh, whether they're going to continue uh, straight through the intersection or they're going to uh, make a turn left or right. Um, I, I hope I, I hope I covered that question. If if not, if you want to send a follow up question, or um, we can certainly get back with you on that one. But uh, yeah, the 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 real idea of that is to slow traffic down to the point uh, that pedestrians can safely cross. Um, the the nice thing about uh, roundabouts uh, and pedestrians crossing that roundabouts is that uh, they cross only one direction of travel at a time. Uh, and then in the middle with the islands, there's a pedestrian refuge where people can wait uh, to cross safely uh, the other direction of, of travel. Um, so there are advantages to pedestrians uh, crossing, crossing roundabouts. Next question comes in from Kathy K. Some of the intersections seem to be new concepts and confusing. Will there be lag time and opening to get people more familiar with how they work, like was done with the diverging diamond in Ankeny? 
This is Joe Spradling again. Um, yes, for sure. This is uh, very early on in the study phase. Uh, we have initial concepts um, that we've proposed here today. Um, certainly, there would be additional study with any of these new types of intersection uh, treatments, uh, especially the innovative ones that you haven't seen before. Uh, there would be an entire uh, design phase as well um, with public, you know, opportunity for public input and education. And so I think there would be a, a you know, there would be a effort to um, educate the public on uh, being able to use these type of new types of intersections. And again, uh, none of these are proposed at this point. These are just initial concepts. And so further study and design would need to be done before anything would be constructed. <clears throat> anything to add on that, Tony? No, just, I mean, there'd be enhanced signing, you know, again, any kind of, you know, mm -hmm. signs key to any kind of intersection, whether a traditional intersection or, or a new type of intersection proposed here, or we always, you know, signs key to making mm -hmm. sure folks, and once folks, with any project, we know it near the first few weeks or whatever, there's a learning curve, and once folks drive it a few times, they, they're able to maneuver it safely. Next question comes in from Mary C. Where would the bike route start on County Line Road? And where would the bike trail go from County Line Road? Okay, this is Joe Spradling again. Uh, Kristen, if you could scroll to the very south end of the study. So cur currently, um, the city of Des Moines has a project on Indianola Avenue. Um, they're going to be reconstructing the road in that area. They're also going to be adding um, uh, bike facilities on that corridor. Um, the uh, on US 69 itself, um, while nothing's been designed yet, it's more conceptualized. Uh, there will be a shared use path off the side of the road um, on the four lane divided highway. And it would be within typically within uh, public right of way. And it would proceed north, kind of northwesterly um, from that intersection and then travel along that green line um, on the US 69 corridor. And so it would, would it would be either on the west side or east side of the road. Again, nothing's been designed at this point, um, but just conceptually, that would be an eight to 10 foot wide shared use path um, that would run in that right of way and run kind of north and south along US 69. Anything, Tony or John, to, to add to that one? No, nothing for me, Joe. I want to get over it. Okay. And oh, one, one last thing to point out, the, the line in blue uh, are portions of Indianola Avenue that have already been improved and have, I believe, bike lanes in both directions on them. Uh, so it is providing connectivity uh, to some of the existing bike facilities within the area. <clears throat> Next question is from Kathy K. The roundabouts in Ankeny seem to be working well, but took a lot of real estate. Does the highway going through the city have that much land to spare safely? So the, this is Joe Spradling. Um, so the, the five that we're considering at this point are, um, again, very conceptual in nature. Um, things haven't been fully designed, so we don't know the full impact to the surrounding area. Um, it is true that that roundabouts do take up um, additional um, real estate over a traditional intersection. Um, again, individual impacts at individual intersections have not been quantified or looked at at this point, um, but uh, it is something that, that is worth considering. And with future study, um, that is a consideration is what, what kind of private property impacts there are um, at those intersections. And so that is uh, factored in when, when making a decision on whether to move forward with a roundabout or not. Any, anything else to add there on that one? Okay. The next question is from Trevor G. The intersection of Emma Avenue and US 69 is currently uncontrolled. There is a new apartment complex and multiple businesses that gain access to US 69 here. As a frequent user of this intersection, I can say with confidence this is a danger, dangerous interchange. It, is all, it also does not facilitate any safe pedestrian traffic. The intersection desperately needs a stoplight to regulate traffic. 
Is this being considered? And if not, how can we get the intersection reviewed? Okay, just to clarify, I believe that was Emma Avenue. Correct. Emma Avenue and US 69. Yeah, so so Emma, we, we did look at that um, for traffic signal warrants. Um, it did not meet uh, any of the warrants uh, for a traffic signal at that location. Uh, we are considering uh, three quarter access at that location um, at this at this point in time. Um, that restricts left out. That's a three quarter access. That's right. That that restricts any type of left turn movement um, onto the corridor, uh, which helps uh, pedestrian safety as well as their vehicular safety. Um, there is a signal uh, for crossing uh, about two blocks south um, at McKinley. Um, so we we haven't considered. Um, uh, any more at that location, specific location. Um, I know our crash review um, at that location was very low uh, in the rate, and that was uh, performed between 2014 and 2018. Uh, we do have another year of crash data, so that's certainly something that we could look at and review. And uh, if we see a, a higher crash rate or some sort of trend there, um, I think that's something that we could address going forward in the study. And I don't remember, did we count this intersection when the project first started? I believe we it's did have updated yeah, counts so at that location. As, yes. as soon as we started this, that was one of the areas we got to count on. So. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So we could go back and look at updated crash data for another year yeah. um, from when we looked at it the first time. And, and traffic may have changed, but <clears throat> with today's conditions, it's gone down possibly uh, mm -hmm. with the situation we're in. So it wouldn't. We've probably got more traffic in the count we performed two years ago than we'd have on, at least on 69 out there now. That's right. Yeah. Um, we could take a look at 2019 crash rates too yeah. and just, just double check that to see uh, what the rates were. Yeah. Okay. The next question is from Mel P. At Murray intersection, option C would present concerns with closing westbound Murray Street. As Murray links to Southeast 6 and adjoining neighborhoods west of US 69, option D would be preferred for optional, optimal semi and traffic management from MLK and US 69. Does the Iowa DOT have a preferred option for Murray intersection? Not, not this is Tony Gustafson. Uh, not at this time. Again, we're just in the study phase, so we're taking comments and considering all options. So there is no preferred alternative at this time. And we we need to weigh in tonight on the review, and then also the city of Des Moines, is our major partner here at this intersection. So again, we're just in the very initial stages of this of the study, and so there's we, right now the DOT does not have a preferred option. Next question is from Austin B. What design provisions are being made to improve DART bus services along the corridor? So th this is Joe Spradling. Um, to my knowledge, I think uh, Route 14 is the only uh, current uh, bus, bus line uh, which runs from basically downtown up to Euclid and over. Um, I, I, I would say just in, in general, terms um, you know looking at that corridor uh, slowing traffic um, with the series of roundabouts and uh, and the raised median um, I think that's going to provide uh, additional safety benefits for all users um, including transit users uh, and buses um, so I, I would say any any type of improvements that we make that improve safety um, along the corridor are also going to benefit uh, transit users at the same time. Um, so, uh, other than that, at this high level of study, um, not, nothing other, speci anything specific has uh, been reviewed or considered. Uh, but we're always open to comments um, to to kind of look at other specific locations or treatments. <clears throat> the next question is from Mel P. Is there a general time frame for implementing part or all of these improvements? And thank you for providing this input session. Sure. So I, I can start this one off, and Tony may want to jump in here. Um, so there, there is no uh, implementation timeline. Um, there is no construction funding allocated for any improvements along the corridor currently. 
uh, that we're considering here today. Um, so no design's been done yet. Uh, there's no construction timeline and there's no construction funding at this point. Yeah, you covered it, Joe. Yeah. Yep. So we're hoping, you know, as we proceed down development design and, and prioritize, you know, areas of the corridor that, again, based on some of it on safety, um, other accommodations, you know, we can get a, maybe a top 10. And then, then the next, the biggest hurdle, of course, with all projects is uh, finding the funding to, to make the improvements, to build the improvements. So, yeah, again, nothing's, nothing's funded at this time. The next question is from Austin B. To clarify, will DART buses fit through the roundabout staying within a single lane? Uh, yes, the, an the answer to that is yes. Um, however, um, Kristen, if you could just pull up one of those roundabouts, it doesn't matter which one, but if you could pull up the schematic, I just want to point something out. Um, so th they will fit um, through the intersection as a roundabout. Um, the one thing that we do provide for, um, if you look at the uh, interior lane, so on the circle outside of the gray circle is, um, is a truck apron. So if there's any type of truck that's even larger than a bus, uh, I could off track, the trailer could go onto that truck apron and perform any type of maneuver, including um, a left turn or going a th you know, on a through movement on US 69. So uh, these have been designed to accommodate um, full semis, tractor trailers. So yes, a city bus would, would, uh, would be able to navigate this um, by, stay, by staying in their lane. That is all of the questions that I have. I will give it just about 15 more seconds to see if anything else pops up here. And I am not seeing anything, so this will wrap up our online meeting. Thank you again for joining us. A recording of this video will be available on the same website that you use to join the online meeting. And you'll also find a self-paced online meeting story map where you can review and zoom in on alternatives you are interested in on the same website. And have a great rest of the evening, and thank you again for joining us.